The combination of changes in the economy, changes in social mores, changes basically in our culture, really put a damper on the entire fur industry. Evans was hardly the only family-owned and operated multi-store chain across the country during the 1950s and 60s. Relationships like those had between Evans Furs and Sackowitz department stores of Houston, Texas, specifically, showed the power of combining multiple powerhouses into something that, for Evans Furs, brought it into the luxurious Southwest territory of Sackowitz. The French have a great expression, on cherche le crénon, look for the crack and then drive a wedge in it. Sackowitz, which, based in Texas, and with its own long family history, was one of the major moves made by David Meltzer, son of the founder A.L. Meltzer, when he became CEO of Evans Furs. Because acquiring the lease to run the fur salons in Sackowitz was special, because in the golden age of retail, Sackowitz was more than just a store. My grandfather uh, and great uncle moved up to Houston, and expanded with Houston as Houston grew. In 1949, uh, it was growing so much and Houston was growing so much, they wanted to really build a wonderful new store. If there was one thing Robert Sackowitz learned during his European education was the benefit of having concessions or leased departments. If you go to Europe, even today to China, most of the stores would lease out space. It was just a vertical mall, giving them the equivalent of stores within a store. Armed with a partnership that would give Evans Furs valuable entree into the oil-rich Southwest while giving Sackowitz a luxury outerwear fur department in great demand, both companies flourished and continued onward with their plans for growth. And we had a very nice business um, in Houston because people traveled and uh, they uh, knew that uh, a good fur coat was a great symbol of uh, success. Capitalizing on ways to expand their businesses in tandem, both companies look to the internet of yesteryear, the mail order catalog business. And the golden age of catalogs was in this period of roughly 1970 to 1990, 95. The Sackowitz holiday catalog rivaled even that of more well-known Neiman Marcus, and Evans Furs provided Robert Sackowitz with the juice to make a serious holiday statement. And I said to David, what's the most expensive fur in the world that would be totally unique? And he said, clearly, Robert, it's a Russian crown borgazine sable. Further showcasing the teamwork the two businesses displayed together, the quick-thinking Sackowitz came up with a solution that David Meltzer and Evans Furs could afford to support. I said, okay, what if I can pre-sell it beforehand? I said, you get it pre-sold, we're going to Leningrad together. We went through and we'd go through and grade and I learned more about the fur business in those three days than anybody ever could. And as my grandfather, who also worked for Evans Furs for over 50 years, used to tell me, good times don't last, but good people do. And by the 1980s, the fur business was caught between numerous paradigm shifts from which it would not recover. Well, in the fur business, PETA, PETA had a lot to do with it. The fur business began to, to drop off in our part of the world when the economy shifted. Along came other aspects of this, the country became over mauled. Um, internet came along. But prior to that, Evans Furs and Sackowitz department stores enjoyed tremendous success in partnership together, with both companies growing to over $150 million in sales revenue. We boomed in the 70s. All of the oil producing states, people had a lot of money, they bought furs, they bought couture. That was the era, uh, I would say, uh, the golden era of department stores and specialty stores.